absolutely nothing original about it whatsoever. Pretty exciting day this morning. Um, nice early start and got up and decided to do a, a skydive, which is absolutely superb. Um, and headed, that was in uh, Queenstown, so we headed out of Queenstown. Sorry, I'm getting ab absolutely munched to bits with the, I think they're sand flies or some kind of crazy flying ant things that are just, yeah, they're all over the place here. But now we made our way up to Milford Sounds and this is Milford Sounds, it's absolutely idyllic. What a beautiful uh, mountain pass that we actually went through as well to get through here. Um, it's relatively close to Queenstown as the crow flies, um, but getting here you have to loop around a good, yeah, quite a few hours. Um, but it was well worth it because the drive was absolutely spectacular. Uh, coming through, you know, down towards all the fjords and things and just seeing every source, a glimpse when you're going through the forest, it really was absolutely magnificent. So it just got here about 10 minutes ago. It's currently um, in the, the 31st of December. So it's, it's New Year's, sorry, I'm still getting bitten to death. It's, um, yeah, New Year's Eve or Hogmanay as we like to call it in Scotland. So it was just a quick nip out, just a bit of a look around because I knew the sun was setting. So I managed to catch the sun before it actually dipped behind, as you can see just about here, you can still see it's kind of glowing. Uh, so just before it dipped down, um, so just, yeah, just a bit of exploring. We are currently staying at a, uh, Milford Sound Lodge, which is just um, just about 10, 15 minute walk along the river here. Uh, beautiful spot. Um, as I said, we just got here about five, 10 minutes ago. Uh, dumped the bags, got my camera gear and um, headed towards the fjord. But there's quite a few fjords, it's hard to tell. I'm kind of a, an industrial kind of fishing port, which you can see behind me here. There's lots of uh, boats coming and going. Um, so yeah, a wee bit more exploring to do tomorrow here for a couple of nights and um, it's supposed to be raining tomorrow, but uh, that, that's fine. If anything, it might kind of add drama. Uh, some low clouds um, bring in contrast with the, dark, the dampness as well. So we'll just see how it goes. It's like 50% chance of rain or something. Uh, but apparently it rains 300 days out of 365 days here. <laughs> so. Coming here today, it was quite good to actually get this evening, um, get a shot away. I did a stopped off on the way through the pass as well to take a couple more shots, um, which was, yeah, definitely worth it. If anything, I'm kind of more happy with the, the, the random, <laughs> sorry, shots that I'm getting uh, just when I when driving past and seeing something. The light was a wee bit better back then as well. It was around about seven o'clock, whereas now it is, yeah, it's 20 to nine now. So calling it a day, putting the camera away and um, bringing in the new year with, couple of drinks and with this as a backdrop pretty awesome very very fortunate very lucky it is, it is some place to spend Hogmanay to Wanaka and anyone who spent more than five seconds on Instagram will realize or will know about the Wanaka tree which is a I actually don't even know what tree it is 
but it's a tree that sits in the middle of uh, the lake. Well, it's not in the middle of the lake, it's just off the shore, but it's submerged. It's a very, very famous spot. I, I, I really, you know, it's, it's such a popular shot. I'm certainly not going to create anything original here, but I've got a bit of time uh, before dinner, so I thought I'd pop along uh, and capture it. And I think I might have just kind of lucked out because initially I thought it might be a morning shot because of where the sun is setting. But right now, if I get there in time, if I get a space because it is busy, the light is just catching the tree, which is great. Uh, complete fluke. As I said, I did no homework about this. I wasn't really planning on coming along to it. I actually thought it was further away than what it was. Never realised that it was um, close, really close to the... We've got some right characters here. Yeah, I never realised it was so close to the actual city centre, which is just there. So it's just a pretty much a 10 minute walk along. So I'm just going to kick out here. I'm going to obviously do long exposure, flatten off the water. There's not an awful lot of breeze. I can see the tree moving slightly, so what I will do is take a couple of exposures. One quick uh, exposure, and uh, that way I can actually kind of pinpoint some of the leaves that have been blurred because the long exposure one and the long exposure one will, as I said, flatten off the, the water itself. So here we are, and all we have to do is find a composition. Well, a couple of shots taken, um, along with a few hundred more. But uh, it's a, a tricky old setup. The light was, was fading, sometimes it went, sometimes it came back in between the, the trees, a bit of cloud cover as well. So, um, yeah, but it's, it was worth doing. Serious long exposures, and as I said, the problem there is you have a bit of movement with the branches, especially the lower limbed ones that are in the water. Uh, so what I've done, I have taken, the concept was there was, what I had to do was set it to manual, um, obviously to, to dial in the exact uh, settings I was after. So I was, I was shooting about 15 second exposures. Um, I recall that was at f-stop 11, uh, and I think I had the ISO at 320. So that's with the big stopper. Um, I also had the polarizer on there, Lee polarizer, Lee big stopper and a soft grad for some of the photos. Others I took off because it was kind of, the soft grad was happening where the tree was, depending on where I was positioning the tree. Um, so yeah, the, the issue there, so then I, I took it out of manual mode after I've done the main exposures. I was doing a bit of focus, focus stacking as well, especially the ones with the, the kind of drift we did in the foreground, just to, just to kind of nail that focus as well so it's sharp. Um, so like three focus stacked long exposures of 15 seconds, then with with it in manual mode, so I could, as I said, so I could dial in. Then I took the I took the the, the the filter system off and I moved it into aperture priority mode and took a picture with the same aperture. So it's as I said, it was f point. I think it was f point eleven. Either either, f.9, f.11, I can't really recall. Um, but having that, the, the camera does its own thing and makes a, a quick exposure. So in other words, the moving leaves that were problematic in the long exposure, I'm getting lost, I'm going the wrong way, that were problematic in the long exposure, then became frozen with the quick exposure when you set it to aperture mode. If you know what I mean, trying to explain myself. You don't, it, when, you put, when you set the camera into aperture mode, it, it kind of delivers, you know, one of the fastest exposures it can because, you know, that's what, it's, that's what it thinks it's doing, that's what it wants to do for... So because of that, nothing else has really changed, the same f-stop. Um, and it, all I'm going to be using that is for that lower limb. It might not work, it might have a really crappy effect. Um, but, you know, even just kind of getting some of the edges that are sharp. Uh, it's going to be tricky because obviously the water behind the leaves and the, the limbs they will be um that might be a bit too choppy so it's going to be a bit delicate work uh, but for the sake of just quickly after you've done the main exposures taking the filter systems off throwing it over to aperture priority taking a quick snap um it's it's definitely a worthwhile practice because you have that kind of sharp folk, sharp quick exposure in your arsenal when you bring it into photoshop um in post-production 
So that was the plan. Uh, don't know if it'll work, but uh, just looking at the viewfinder, some nice images. Um, actually, some of the ones with the moving branches, if it was all moving, works out better because, you know, it's, it's a wee bit more atmospheric. You've got the limbs of the trees, the branches themselves actually being solid structures. So as I kind of, you know, a kind of fine art print, that would work better. Uh, and I, I did a couple of overexposed ones as well because, you know, just to blend the, 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 the water in with the sky as well. So there's just one image, one, one um, focus point, focal point being, I navigate over this water again, being the tree itself. So uh, yeah, rambling a wee bit, but I'm trying to explain my kind of thought process, but I, I'm trying to explain it not knowing if it actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was good there was quite a lot of photographers there as i kind of tried to show you in the video and uh, chatting to quite a few of them as well which is lovely um and they all had the kind of same it's funny they, we all had the same kind of thought processes none of us really want to you know we don't have an awful lot of passion about this photograph of the, you know the, the the tree the but because we're here it just feels kind of rude not to do it so all the other guys i was chatting to there they were saying yeah it's it's a shot that just must be done when you're when you're here um, but not not too in love with the whole kind of setup because it's absolutely nothing original about it whatsoever. 